Hello and welcome to episode 107 of Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty. Of course, I am your host, Rick Doherty. I am so excited today because my good friend Sarah Says is back on the show after a bit of a hiatus. As you can imagine, with a little kid, the holidays were just insane for her. But she is back on the show today. The topic is also a fun one with Super Nintendo World opening this weekend at Universal Studios Hollywood. Sarah and I will give an overview of the land and talk about what we think it means for both Disneyland and what the addition of a larger version of Super Nintendo World at Epic Universe in Orlando in 2025 will mean for Walt Disney World. Before we get started, there's an awful lot of interesting theme park news. On Tuesday, registration opened for the return of Run Disney to Disneyland Resort. All races for Disneyland Half Marathon Weekend in January of 2024 sold out on the first day that they were made available to the general public. Elsewhere in Run Disney, the courses were released for Princess Half Marathon Weekend in Walt Disney World, the weekend of February 26th, these courses can be seen at rundisney.com. Over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, reservations for Roundup Rodeo Barbecue in Toy Story Land will be available starting on Tuesday, February 21st. The restaurant will be opening Thursday, March 23rd. Staying at Hollywood Studios, I am thrilled that Chip and Dale started meeting in their Rescue Rangers outfits yesterday. This is building off a pattern of increased character interactions at Hollywood Studios. In coming days, I will have videos with many of these characters on the Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty YouTube channel. Make sure you are subscribed. At the Wide World of Sports facility in WDW, the Tampa Bay Rays have started spring training practices. The team's regular Port Charlotte training location was heavily affected by a hurricane last fall. The Atlanta Braves previously used the Wide World of Sports facility for spring training through the 2019 season. Moving up to Philadelphia, where people in the city of brotherly love will have the chance to move past last weekend's loss on the gridiron by heading to the Franklin Institute. The museum's exhibit on the 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney Company opens on Saturday. As many of you know, I was born and raised in Pennsylvania, and I even went to college in Philadelphia, so I am really going to have to make my way up to the Keystone State to see this. Earlier this week, we got a look at the hologram of Walt Disney that is a part of the exhibit, and this is very, very impressive. There was some good news from Universal Orlando Resort. Universal is planning on raising the starting pay rate for team members $2 to $17 per hour. Not only is this great news for team members, but hopefully it will help Walt Disney World cast members with their negotiations for better pay. We're also a little over a month away from some major changes coming to Walt Disney World. Happily ever after, the nighttime spectacular at Magic Kingdom will be returning on April 3rd. That is also the day that Epcot Forever will be returning to Epcot and replacing one of my personal favorite nighttime spectaculars, Harmonious. So those are some controversial things happening, but something that is not controversial on April 4th, the official opening of the Tron Light Cycle Run in Tomorrowland in Magic Kingdom. Cast member previews have already been happening. Annual pass holder previews are on the way. And then it opens to the general public on April 4th. I know everyone is excited for this ride because it has taken forever to do the construction. The pandemic halted things. We were supposed to get it sometime in 2020 or 2021 and now here it is 2023 and we are finally looking forward to this ride to stay up to date with everything happening with the theme parks make sure to follow me on twitter at rick underscore ear that's at rick underscore ear head to instagram where i can be found at at rick doherty tgtt Doherty is spelled D-O-U-G-H-E-R-T-Y, and you can find me on TikTok 
at Tall Guy Talks Travel. Let's welcome my good friend Sarah Says back to the show. Thanks for being here, Sarah. I am so excited to be back. It has been forever since Sarah Says has been <laughs> on the show. We have missed her. You have missed her. And now we get to enjoy a really fun conversation today. This episode is going live on Thursday, February the 16th, which means tomorrow, Universal Studios Hollywood is going to be opening up Super Nintendo World officially. Yes, people have gotten some soft opens, some previews. But tomorrow it opens for the general public. And there are a lot of implications with Universal opening this new land. First of all, Universal Studios Hollywood gets a lot of slack for not being a great theme park because it is kind of shoehorned onto an actual studio lot. It is going to raise the game of Universal Studios Hollywood exponentially. It is also a land that is going to be coming to Universal's Epic Universe in Orlando coming up. They're saying an opening date of 2025, but to be honest, they are really, really going quickly in the construction of this land. So we may see it even earlier in 2025. I doubt we get it for 2024, but they're moving quickly with this. So there are a lot of implications, even if you're a Disney fan and you're not a big Universal fan, we're going to be talking about how this affects Disney as well. So first of all, Sarah, let's just get started with a little bit of an overview of what people can expect if they're going to visit Universal Studios Hollywood and see Super Nintendo World. It looks pretty amazing from the videos and everything that I've seen. I mean, my whole family is thrilled because we are a whole bunch of Mario fans at our house. But yeah, I mean, it looks like size wise, we're looking about Avengers campus size. I'm thinking. So it's not huge. And as Rick pointed out, you know, it's put on a back lot. I mean, it's, it is part of Universal Studios Hollywood, their actual functioning back lot. But from what I've seen, I mean, there's going to be a ride, there's, or there is, excuse me, because it exists now, <laughs> there's a ride, there's a restaurant, there is interactive material throughout the entire land that you can, of course, pay extra to get to experience all that amazing interactive stuff. I think you enter through Peach's Castle, uh, you go through Bowser's Castle to get onto the attraction, the Mario Kart Bowser's challenge, I believe it's called. Yeah. Mario Kart Bowser's challenge. So for people like me who are like hardcore Mario nerds and love it, it's just amazing to think that, oh my gosh, I can actually walk through these things. My son is going to die. He's going <laughs> to, he's going to love it. We've watched videos and TikToks and he's like, we're going there, mom. And I'm like, one day we will go there. <laughs> So first of all, what are we looking at with this Mario Kart ride? Is it something that is really accessible to the whole family? Because obviously, Super Nintendo World is a land, like you said, your son is really, really interested in this land. Yes, middle-aged white guys like myself <laughs> are going to be all about this because we were playing Nintendo when we were little kids and we kind of were that first group to get it when we were really, really young. I was playing Nintendo when I was your son's age. Exactly. And now it's going to be nostalgia for people like me, but it's still going to be popular with the younger kids. So are they going to be able to do this ride? So the ride itself is going to have to have a minimum high requirement. So it's not going to be like those dark rides we see in fantasy land. So it is a 40 inch height requirement and you do as a child have to have an adult with you if you're under 48 inches. So it's pretty much if you're less than three and a half feet, you can't ride this ride, which is really unfortunate. Luckily in my family, most people are born at three and a half feet. So we'll be covered on this one. <laughs> <laughs> what does it look like when compared to the height requirements for a lot of Disney rides? It actually meets the same as the average um, height for Disney rides. So if your child can ride Rise of the Resistance, they can ride Bowser's Challenge. Um, it's pretty that from looking it up, it's pretty common that 40 inches is what 
Disney asks for for most of the rides for kids to ride, which is pretty cool because that means it's comparable to this. And, you know, if you're over at Disney and your kid can ride a ride and um, then they can probably come over and ride Bowser's Challenge as well. And for the most part, if your kid is between 40 and 48 inches, you're probably not letting them ride by themselves anyway. So (laughs) that's not going to be too much of a hindrance with that rule. You have mentioned that your family is really excited about this one. And Universal Studios Hollywood, I've never gone. I know that it has a reputation for just being so tiny. This isn't a plot of land that really is conducive for having a major, major theme park on it. But do you think this is going to be any sort of challenge to Disneyland? Or do you think people are going to be more likely to travel to Southern California, do a Disneyland vacation, and have a day or two that they spend at Universal, where this might actually be a benefit to Disneyland? I had never like actually thought about that until you just brought it up. I think it'll be a benefit to Disneyland because of how little is it. Unlike Epic Universe, which people are probably going to plan whole vacations over because of how big this is going to be. For this, it's like this perfect add-on to your Disney vacation. It's kind of like people, some people go to Universal and then add a day or two at Disney. It's, yeah, it's a nice little compliment to your visit to Southern California. And I mean, unfortunately, they aren't really close together, like we see in Florida where you can get to Universal pretty quickly from Disney. It is, for those of you that have been on Southern California highways, <laughs> it <laughs> yes. definitely is a bit of a trek to get there. But I think that, yeah, it would be a great compliment to a Disney vacation. And unless you're just not really in, you're into more of the bigger rides versus Disney rides, uh, maybe people who are older, um, older meaning like our age, not like geriatric. <laughs> Um, but people who grew up with Mario, I can totally see people coming to this park to just experience this. I mean, I'm not going to lie when wizarding world of Harry Potter opened, um, the second half of the park, I was there for my 30th birthday, like a month later. And I literally was only in wizarding world of Harry Potter for an entire day. I rode one other ride. It was the minions ride. And that was only because it was on the way to get to Wizarding World of <laughs> Harry Potter. So, yeah, I think for families, though, I think this would be just a great compliment to add to your Disney vacation. So you are thinking about a Southern California trip in the somewhat future. You're trying to plan yeah. it, trying to get your son to a lot of these theme parks And because of Super Nintendo World, you're now talking about some Disneyland days, some Universal days, maybe even Legoland down in San Diego. So when you talk about Universal being far from Disneyland, yes, it is very far from Disneyland. I think a lot of people who are familiar with the Los Angeles area always laugh that the Angels call themselves the Los Angeles Angels when (laughs) you realize how far away Anaheim is from Los Angeles. Right. But I think if you're going to rent a car or if you're going to drive down there, you can do a lot of these things. You can plan to do two days at Disneyland, a day at Universal, and then maybe head down to Legoland, maybe Mm -hmm. head down to the San Diego Zoo or do the beach or... Los Angeles is an international cultural city. There's plenty to do that isn't a theme park. So I honestly think in Southern California, this is going to be a benefit to Disney. Oh, totally. Now, I don't think that's going to be the case at Epic Universe. When that opens, we're thinking 2025. Super Nintendo World in Universal's Epic Universe is shaping up to be a much bigger deal. Like Sarah said earlier, the version at Universal Hollywood, she is comparing it to Disney's California Adventure and Avengers Campus. But from some of the guesses that we have, and I think that we have to give a lot of credit right now, To Alicia Stella at Orlando Park Stop. She has done a ton of research on this. She has also done a lot of good philanthropic work for members of the LGBTQ plus community in the Orlando area. So she deserves credit for that as well. But for the topic of this conversation, 
she has some pretty good guesses as to how Super Nintendo World is going to look at Epic Universe, and it's going to be much bigger. The Mario Kart ride is going to be there. There's going to be a Donkey Kong roller coaster, a Yoshi family ride like the one that you can see in Asia at the Universal Park with Super Nintendo World. There's going to be Toad's Restaurant. This is going to be a land that is intended to compete with Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Pandora the World of Avatar, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. They are throwing everything at this land at Epic Universe. It is going to cost Disney some park days, at least, from vacationers when this opens in Orlando. Sarah, if you were to take an Orlando theme park vacation right now, at most, you would be doing one day at Universal, right? At most? If you did it right now. If I did it right now, I'd do two days at Universal because... I got my fix of Harry Potter in the first time, and then I'd have to spend one day at Wizarding World of Harry Potter and the next day getting to write everything else, to be completely honest. I would okay. do two days right now at Universal if I went, because there is a lot. I love thrill rides. But if you ask my husband, on the other hand, he would say one day because he would go and kind of experience it, and then he'd go back to the Disney bubble. Now, Epic Universe opens, and you're going to need at least three days. You might make that four days at oh, yeah. Universal. That might tip the balance. That might be four days at Universal, three days at Disney, where all of a sudden you're talking about maybe Disney not losing everybody, but losing those park days. Yeah, I mean, thinking about it, like right off the top of my head right now, is we would probably go, so we on average we go for about eight days. Uh, two travel days, so 10. We would probably split it four and four to go right down the middle. But the thing too is if we went to, if or if we found out more about Epic Universe before we go, if there's more stuff that would interest my child or my husband or my family, it could definitely cut it down. Plus price, how much is it going to cost compared to Disney? It's because right now it is less expensive uh, to hit Universal. Yeah, we may tip it to where we're spending less time at Disney and more time at Universal, especially because they have hotels there now. So you don't have to, you can go spend your time and leave, take all your stuff and <laughs> go to Universal and stay at one of their hotels. <laughs> There's going to be a hotel overlooking Epic Universe that they are building. <gasps> it is going to be incredible, <laughs> at least judging by the concept art. And we know from Everything we've seen from different Disney concept art to universal concept art, a lot of the time it looks more grandiose in the art fashion. But this theme park is looking incredible. I am thinking this is going to be a big change. One of the things I'm wondering is, are they going to have to introduce new annual pass holder levels? Are they going to have to limit how much annual pass holders are going to be able to visit Epic Universe because this place is going to be slammed? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be crazy. And I was actually just thinking, too, um, with just Super Nintendo World you were mentioning, it seems like, I mean, other than size, the, the biggest difference between the two is going to be the attractions because – in California, they do have Toad's Cafe, and um, they have, like, one store. I mean, they're probably also, in Epic Universe, going to have the Mario and Friends meet and greets. So, I mean, the things I can think of for that specifically also is um, how much more interaction is going to happen with these power-up bands and things like that. So, people, it's like, okay, if you've been to Super Mar or, excuse me, Super Nintendo World in California, are you going to spend as much time in it after your first go in Epic Universe versus, oh, we'll just go see it because we've already been there. And now we're going to experience the rest of Epic Universe because there's so much more stuff to see. That's a good point. And I do think that Super Nintendo World, even if you do it in Hollywood, once it opens in Orlando, you're not going to be able to just skip it. Right. When I went to Disneyland with you back in 2021, I can't believe that's two years ago now. <laughs> 
the only reason that Courtney and I really did any of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge was because you were experiencing it for the first time and we wanted to see you experience it and we <laughs> wanted to have those experiences with you. We wanted to go to Oga's Cantina and we wanted to ride the Millennium Falcon with you. We wanted to do, well, we would have done Rise of the Resistance no matter what. <laughs> but you can't skip. <laughs> But we spent more time in Galaxy's Edge because we were with you than we would have if we were going just the two of us, mm -hmm. where you can skip the opposite coast with Galaxy's Edge. You're not going to be able to do that with Super Nintendo World. If you've done it in Hollywood, you're going to have to do it again in Orlando because... They have the Donkey Kong coaster coming, mm -hmm. the Yoshi family ride. It's going to be bigger. There's going to be more happening in Orlando. They are taking advantage of building a brand new theme park on basically an empty lot. So they right. have no restrictions like they have over in Hollywood. So I do think that is a good point where even building this land and having it come out in the United States two years before it's going to be opening on the East coast isn't going to hurt the East coast because it's going to be so much bigger there. Oh yeah, for sure. It makes me think too, like wizarding world of Harry Potter. For me, it's the opposite. I've done the one in Orlando and it's huge and amazing and wonderful. But next time I go to universal in Hollywood, I probably will walk through it, but I've seen it all. It's not that much different where this, you know, it is totally different. So when we go to this on my coast, then go to Florida, I'm like, Oh no, we're, we're riding the Yoshi ride. We are riding the donkey Kong roller coaster. Like we don't, you all don't get a choice. <laughs> you lie out your teeth. You know, the next time that you are in any universal park, you are going to be spending hours in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. That. It's really small in Hollywood. And the thing is my favorite side of it is not the side that is in Hollywood. I love Diagon Alley and they only have Hogsmeade. And it's like, okay, yeah, and I do, I'll go and I'll totally spend time and I will love it, but I will not love it to the point I will be there all day. And I don't get to ride the train in Hollywood, so. <laughs> that is a very, very good point. <laughs> and not to get too distracted because we are talking about Super Nintendo World and not Epic Universe, but... Epic Universe was going to have a Fantastic Beasts area. Now mm -hmm. it's rumored that this might be the Ministry of Magic Ooh. and be more Harry Potter themed because, let's be honest, the Fantastic Beasts movies didn't take off and have the staying power no. that Harry Potter had for most people. And they are going to be at opposite corners of the park. So you are going to get to walk in Go to your left, Super Nintendo World. Then go all the way across and have another installment of the Wizarding World in some form or fashion. That park is going to be insane. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. It's going to be really, really cool. It's this all the like rumors and things I've seen. I'm just like blown away. And I'm like, why can't you put this on my coast? Like people in Florida are always like, how come... Disneyland gets 30 seconds more of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railroad. That's not fun. Like, that's not fair. And I'm like, we have nothing over here. Give us our 30 seconds of Runaway Railroad. Like, just be happy for us. <laughs> Walt Disney World gets quantity and Disneyland gets quality because that's they right. have to fit in a smaller space. It's the same yep. thing as Universal Studios Hollywood when we're talking yep. about their Super Nintendo world. Yep. Disneyland has to make sure everything is quality. Walt Disney World has to make sure everybody can get through and they can crank more and more people into yes. the rides and they can keep everybody happy. Mm-hmm. Anytime somebody complains about Disneyland getting more stuff, just remind them that Walt Disney World has Epcot and Animal Kingdom. Check. Exactly. Mate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, this isn't a Disney conversation, but we did yeah. promise that we would talk a little bit about Disney. I want to know if you have any final thoughts about Super Nintendo World and what this is going to mean in the future, we now have 
like we said earlier, Harry Potter and Nintendo at Universal. We have Star Wars and Avatar for Disney. And actually, Disney has just announced that there's going to be Avatar representation coming to Disneyland nice. in the future. So they're definitely pumping up these major IP properties that they own. After Super Nintendo World, unless there's some sort of deal between Universal and Disney on Marvel, I don't know if we're getting anything super special after this. So you might want to really, really appreciate Super Nintendo World. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, I was thinking the other day, so I was looking at one of our mutual friends on Twitter who got to go and experience Super Nintendo World as a like preview and the popcorn buckets and sippers as a huge video game nerd myself, they're going, in my opinion, in my family, we'll give figment a run for their money. <laughs> they're so cute. I don't know if you've seen them. There's like a little toadstool and then there's the little box. And I was like, Oh, Oh, we're getting one of those each. And they're coming home with us. <laughs> I've never in my life wanted to buy a popcorn bucket until I saw these. <laughs> Does this particular friend's name begin with an S? Yeah. Has a really awesome wife. <laughs> the S totally stands for spoiled brat, by the way. He had a stretch that included that visit to Universal Hollywood, where he was in theme parks for 10 straight days or something like that. Yeah, and it was like they were in different in... coasts. <laughs> yes, yes. Started in Disney World, and then all of a sudden it was like, bam, here I am in in California. And I was like, I hate my life. <laughs> Here I am cleaning my dishes and washing my, my clothes and cleaning my house. <laughs> Every time that Marissa and I talk about how we feel like we are spoiled and that every time we talk about how much we get to do these things, that we must sound like the most privileged people in the world. I just think of our mutual friend whose name begins with S and I'm like, nope, I'm not that bad. <laughs> well, y'all are more spoiled than me. So I just get to watch all of it on TikTok and YouTube. So. <laughs> but then your feet don't hurt afterwards. So it's fine. That's okay. <laughs> One day I, you know what? And when I do, I will be making my grand re-entrance into the theme park world. <laughs> And then we will have content for months with you. There talking will be. About I will show everything. you everything that power band does. I'm going to, I'm a little bummed. I'm not going to lie. I was looking at the power up bands and I'm, we're absolutely getting them because I don't care if they're $40 or not. We're getting them. Um, they don't have one that's Toadette and Toadette is my absolute favorite. And somebody posted a thing the other day that was like, what Mario Kart character are you? And I'm like, Toadette always, but they don't have Toadette. So I'm hoping maybe I could let, universal no on twitter and be like hey i i think it's great you have daisy and peach but can you put toadette in there too thanks <laughs> okay universal get on toadette but <laughs> etsy shop creators can you make a toadette wrap for it or get some sort of toadette representation so that sarah can have that when she goes, she's not rushing. She's not getting there anytime soon. No. So you have plenty of time to plan it for Sarah. I tell you what, Sarah, it has been so great having you back on the show. Your laugh has been missed by all of our listeners. So thank you so much for being here. Yeah, I am so happy. It's so nice to be back. It feels great. I know I've. it's been a crazy couple of months, but I am so happy to be back with all of you. <laughs> This has been episode 107 of Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty. Make sure you are following all of us on social media. Sarah Says can be found on Twitter at Sarah Says 84. I am on Twitter at Rick underscore ear. I'm on Instagram at Rick Doherty TGTT and on TikTok at Tall Guy Talks Travel. Most importantly, make sure you're subscribed to the Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty YouTube channel. I have taken a little break on videos this past week, but I have a lot coming up for you this weekend, including, as I mentioned earlier in the episode, some videos from Hollywood Studios with a lot of character interactions in them. I'll have some food from both Universal Orlando Resort's Mardi Gras 2023 International Flavors of Carnival 
and Epcot's International Festival of the Arts. All of this is just the beginning because we have some very big things planned for March, including a fundraiser that's going to be helping kids throughout the Orlando area. We want to give back to this community that has done so much to help us. We will talk more about it next month. But once again, that's at Rick underscore ear on Twitter, on Instagram. It's at Rick Doherty, TGTT, and on TikTok, at Tall Guy Talks Travel. You're going to want to be following me on all of those different platforms so that you can help some underprivileged kids coming up this spring. Sarah says we'll be back on the show next week with some fascinating history surrounding Universal Orlando Resort for Black History Month. We'll also have another round of Fact or Figment with Marissa from Chicago. All of that will happen next Thursday on Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty. Until then, have a great week.